Smoking remains the number one cause of preventable death in Oklahoma. It costs our state $1.62 billion in health care costs. Now, the revenue raised by this can be spent on other current health care needs. Next, for decades, we talked about how gasoline and diesel taxes should go to roads and bridges. My tax reform plan does that. My plan will ensure that taxes associated with roads and bridges are the funding source for the maintenance of roads and bridges, period. <laughs> now what this does is it returns the individual income taxes to the general revenue fund. This plan does not, by the way, impact the Department of Transportation's eight-year plan. It will stay intact. Oklahoma currently ranks 48th in diesel tax in the nation and 49th in gasoline tax. So I'm proposing a new revenue stream by increasing our gas and diesel taxes to the regional state average but below the national average. By trading out the use of individual income tax to a gas and diesel tax dedicated to roads and bridges, this budget change dramatically improves the percentage of revenue collections this legislature will be able to control. As we've discussed for decades, let's put fuel taxes to roads and bridges. By working together and avoiding distractions, we can solve today's problems and make Oklahoma grow and prosper. First, to improve the workforce and education. I'm going to talk about that. As of August 31, 2016, there were more than 71,000 open jobs in the state of Oklahoma. Of these jobs, almost 18,000 are what we call critical occupations, such as engineers, teachers, nurses, chemists, chemists accountants, and truck drivers. Therefore, in my budget, I'm providing $20 million for higher education programs for critical occupations. A thriving, prosperous economy must have a skilled, educated workforce. And that starts with good teachers in the classroom providing our children with a quality education five days a week. And my budget provides for both. In, in a recent meeting I, I hosted with some major national site location companies, an executive asked me how he could persuade businesses to come to Oklahoma when some of our schools have four-day education weeks. We must have five-day school weeks. Now, let's act on a permanent pay raise for our public school teachers. It's what the public wants, and it's what our families need. The pay raise may need to be phased in, and it may be targeted, but it must be done. However, we also know that a pay raise alone will not improve student outcomes. We have to ensure that more existing dollars are reaching the classroom by tackling administrative inefficiencies head on. We have a very top-heavy system that needs to be reformed to provide teachers and students more resources. The state already provides a number of services that school could voluntarily take advantage of to save money, 
such as our IT services, our purchasing, and bonding assistance. So in addition to, in addition to that, I'm creating a task force to review the state's education funding formula, to evaluate funding sources, and to analyze the K-12 system footprint. Just as we must fix our state's budget structural issues, we must do the same for our K-12 education system. Our education system must be focused on creating the best outcomes. To do so, we must ensure more money goes to the classrooms and to teachers. We must empower students and parents by giving them more choices so they can best address their own needs. We must be accountable to the taxpayers on how we spend our education dollars. Second, public safety. We need... <laughs> Did I wake you up, Commissioner? <laughs> he liked that part, didn't he? He was awake, I'm just teasing him. He's been ringing off my phone, so here we go, Commissioner. This is your part. Second, public safety. We need to keep our families and our communities safe. Last fall, a dangerous man named Michael Vance, Jr. traveled across Oklahoma on a deadly crime spree for a week. Law enforcement was desperate to find him and to stop him. He was spotted in a rural area in Custer County in western Oklahoma. Trooper Brian Costanza drove 230 miles all the way from Maltmoggy County in eastern Oklahoma to help. Driving at a high rate of speed, Trooper Costanza chased Vance down a dark rural road, blowing out his patrol car's own windshield while exchanging gunshots with Vance, who had an AK-47. I'm sure you've seen the video. It's pretty incredible. Trooper Costanza, along with other troopers who helped to pursue and apprehend Vance, are here. Troopers Chris Hanover, and I'm going to ask these guys to please stand as I call off your names. Trooper Chris Han Hanover, Tritton Kiesler, Brandon Stewart, Micah Whittington, along with helicopter pilots Brian Sturgill, Sturgill and Cole Patterson, along with Trooper Brian Costanza. Will you please stand and we'll let us thank you for your service. 